good evening. I'm Evelyn Jerome Alexander with Magellan College Counseling. I'm based here in Los Angeles and we have a team of 12 counselors around the country and we help students go through their search and college search and application process. I'm so thrilled to be here tonight with Chuck Lydiard from the University of Delaware and uh, Ann Wager who is the founder of the Corsava card system. Uh, like I said a moment ago, these are the old version um, she's going to walk us through the new version, which is online and available to everyone. And what Corsava really does, and please, please help us. It helps students. Um, it helps students learn to learn what their priorities are for their right. college experience, and that's the jumping-off point to build your list. Right. So, Anne, take it away. Well, thanks, Evelyn, and welcome everyone. Um, I'm in Seattle, and I'm really excited to share some fun things to do at home to get the college process off to a great start, especially right now when we're all looking for activities to help uh, our kids kind of think about their futures and, and college with everything changing so fast. So over the last few weeks, uh, we've been working on some really cool new uh, at-home resources for Corsava, and we, we launched those today in honor of Evelyn. And I'll share these um, towards the end, I'll tell you a little bit about more about those. But uh, first, let me give you a brief overview of Corsava, why I built it and how it works. So I spent 16 years working one-on-one -on -one with over 1,500 families as they go through the college process. And one of the most rewarding things I think I heard um, over and over again is that the game I developed allows students for the first time to think about what matters most to them and helps them focus on their college choices. So it's now being used by over 1,700 counselors the majority of whom are private counselors like Evelyn and her terrific team. So uh, thank you for that, Evelyn. One thank of you. my early, early adopters. I am, I was. Yeah. yeah. So when I um, first made a career transition from the world of technology to counseling, I worked with students at an underserved high school in Seattle through the Gates Foundation. And I soon discovered I needed a way to quickly understand what mattered most to each of the students and to help them find a place where they would connect with their professors and find classes and activities they loved and build friendships and be happy. And I just really, you know, teenagers are just not nat naturally introspective. I, I'm sure that's nothing new to any of you. And after doing a lot of research, I realized there was nothing out there to help students discover their more emotional preferences, you know, what, what really mattered to them um, uh, before they made a really expensive mistake. So I knew there were a lot more things to think about when picking a college than size, location, major, which are kind of the standard things that when you go to the college board or you're building a list, these are things that um, really, you know, kids select and they're not necessarily really great ways to build a college list. And Chuck's going to speak more to that, but it's the rare student that doesn't change their major. So um, that's oftentimes not a really good reason to to, to add a college to your list unless you're absolutely sure. So I began to build a list of college preferences to help students think more deeply and discover those aspects of college that are rarely considered but that I knew were key to their success. So I created a card game with, and that's what uh, Evelyn was just holding up. There were hard copy cards with an image for each preference to help sort of break the ice and spark conversation. So I wanted to also put some fun into the process as most students approach the college application season with a sense of pessimism and dread, despite being really excited to go to college. So I don't think it has to be that way. And it's a really exciting time in their life. And my goal uh, in building Corsava and bringing it to other people was to really help the college process become less overwhelming and, and more fun. So when um, I initially built it, we really, in the cloud version, I'll just talk about that uh, briefly, but we use gamification to make the process fun. And as students sort the cards into four piles, which is what I'm, you know, more a hard copy thing, but when they're online, they select, there you go, little emoji faces, what they must have, what would be nice, what they don't want, and many end up in the don't care pile. The hard copy deck of cards are still popular for families and counselors who can work one-on-one -on -one with students, but since we moved Corsava to the cloud, we've been able to impact lots more students uh, and schools and, um, and add features. So over the years, we've updated and added more cards based on feedback from hundreds of counselors uh, like Evelyn and thousands of students. So 
every card um, or college attribute that's key to helping students find their success. So Evelyn's gonna take over the screen here and um, take a look at the online version of what the student card sort looks like. You know, there are lots of things that students may never have heard of that come to light during those card sort. And we've added definitions there so <clears> that, <throat> oh, here, just one sec. So Hank is my, I, I, I'll just interrupt for a moment to say that sure. Hank is my second dog, but regular oh. viewers know my first dog, Chloe, who is snoring over here, which is why I'm <laughs> muted occasionally, just so everybody knows. <laughs> Hank has completed one card sort already, but you're gonna show, you're gonna show us sort of the beginning side. Sure. So, um, you know, there are lots of things students may never have heard of that come to light during the process. And the definitions are there so that if you, um, if you just, yeah, click on card sort, they're perfect. Yep. So um, just select something and move on, uh, Evelyn, and we can, um, so you'll see the definitions are there and students, oh, sorry. Um, in a lot of cases, pretty fast. Uh, the definitions help them sort of make um, decisions as they go without a counselor. So you don't need a counselor there. Yep. And uh, things like uh, co-op programs where they can earn credit, make money, and get experience all in one. Those are totally new concepts to many students. So the process of going through the card sort can be super helpful in having them kind of discover things that I just, you know, a lot of kids will say, I had no idea this is something I need to think about before I make a decision on where to go to college. I just so, want to point something yeah, out. One yeah. One of the things that I love about this sort program is before, and like Ann said, I, we've been doing, my whole team has been doing this with our students for years. Um, before this system came out, we basically asked kids, do you want to go to a big school or a little school? Do you want to go to school in a city or not in a city? Do you want to be close to home or far away from home? You know, can you handle cold weather or do you want to be in the sun? <laughs> Those were kind of the only you know, questions. Basically, if you talk to parent friends, those are kind of the questions that they ask their students to kind of get started. But these, you'll notice, and and Anne, you might want to describe why what this little colored stripe is on the left side and how you've organized it. Okay, let me just grab that here. Oh, so the cards are sorted into categories. Uh, everything from residential life to uh, extracurricular activities, campus culture, all of those things. A lot of things. Um, that students haven't really thought about that are going to make them happy once they are there. So I think, um, uh, you know, a lot of these important, or, uh, and I guess I'm trying to think that um, there probably, there are six categories, and you can yeah. see it's color coded on the side. And maybe you can show them a report, Evelyn, on what they'll yeah. get at the end. Yep. So we'll stop in the middle of this one and I'll show you the completed one. Right. Which we did a while ago. And when, you, when you've when you gone through all 122 cards, 122 cards, and, and you saw sort of how quickly I, I clicked through them and students do the exact same thing. You know, they look at the card, sometimes they read right. the explanation, sometimes they don't need the explanation, they just click. And I tell my students, it's okay if the biggest category is I don't care. That's very frequently where most of the cards end up. Right. And, you know, we put majors in there because it, it really gives you a sense. Is the student kind of a STEM kid or do they really like the arts or do they want both? And so a lot of those majors are going to fall into the don't care category right. because they don't mind if it's on campus. It's just not something yep. important to them. So right. the beauty of this report, and we find that um, it's, it's a really valuable thing to either print at home or to share with a counselor at your school. Absolutely. It, it just opens, um, it opens a lot of discussions when you actually see them sorted by category and they're also, um, you know, by the actual, um, uh, the category that they're in as well. The color. And I would say if it's, it, what I do is I get my students to this point, I mm -hmm. have them actually take a screenshot of their must haves um, sometimes they oh. just take a picture of it with their phone and yeah. as we're researching colleges, that's yeah. what we're looking for, right? Like if you want to design your own major, 
yeah. um, as a as a must have, then guess what? We have to look for that in the college. Because right. You told me you must have it. Why would I send you somewhere where you can't have that? <laughs> well, I was gonna say I also sometimes get to the point, get to the end, and they and they're hesitant to mm -hmm. tell you I must have this. Right. So sometimes. Wow there's a lot in the would be nice category and not so many in the must haves. And what I do, if, if I, if we get here and there's only three in the must have mm -hmm. category, I say, do me a favor, let's scroll down and let's go back to those would be nice. And here's the thing, you can always change your answers. If you click on it, it brings it back and you can change your mind and you That's, can, yeah, you can sure. pop it back up. And I think that, um, I think, you know, the beauty of having you there, of course, Evelyn, is that you can really speak to them about a, um, all of those. And I'm just going to, I'm going to mention a few things um, just before I wrap up too on, on conflicting cards and how to kind of have discussions about yep. that. So, um, so students can, after they finish this, they can click on their My Stuff, uh, that little tab at the top right and add the colleges to their list. Chuck's gonna speak, uh, be speaking more to that in a few minutes. But um, the next thing that students can do once they've added colleges um, to their account is that they can rate their must-have and would be nice cards at each of their colleges. And I find that this is a great way to encourage them to do research into each of their colleges in a really targeted way. Because if you tell kids to just go research without really specific guidelines, it's kind of hard to know what to do. Start. But they can see how things line up and get then get a ranked ordered list of colleges based on their preferences. And right. I find this is a super important follow-up step from the card store to students uh, dig into the in individual cards. Like what is the study abroad program? Like, or is there learning support there? Is there a club I want to join or activities at each of their yep. colleges? And then by so, adding notes, they can also add notes on their cards for each of their colleges and they'll have a record. And this is a great way for them to build on the why this college essay for interviews wow. and for meeting, um, you know, the admissions reps, if they ever do that again, <laughs> come to your high school. <laughs> so and it, one of our- Yeah, go our ahead. Viewers, one of our viewers wants to know, is this free and how do you access it? Oh, okay. And um, the, uh, any student can set up an account for free. And um, parents can all, your student can also invite a parent to create a free account. So many parents really love that opportunity to complete their own card sort and rate what matters to them during their research because they can then track things that they need to follow up on. So for example, like if they um, want to find out more about the college's financial aid and scholarship deadlines um, and complete the net price calculator to see what their actual cost is going to be, they can go uh, into their account and just note that on the card as a, yeah. you know, you haven't rated it yet because it's, it, you still need to do a little more research. But so I would have a, if you have a college on your list, it, yeah, then I can take notes on it. How do I take notes on it here? So you, um, if you if you scroll down, you'll see that there's a um, you can add notes on the actual card itself when you're rating um, the the actual card here. Oh, there we go. Okay, got it. Yeah. Yep. Here so we go. Got then it. then your uh, must have there. and would be nice cards pop up and you rate them. And the, just so you know, the, the must-haves are rated more heavily than the would-be-nices. So yep. when you really finish your research, your cards, your colleges are in a, a really, um, so the order they're in on your list yep. is based on your preferences. Right. So if I had good fitness facilities as one of my must-haves, that's, right. that's why this is 48. Right. Then I'm going to go to Stony Brook's website. I just picked a college. Um, sure. And I'm going to say they have awesome, you know, uh, right. fitness facilities, right? So, right. Or, and if you, oh, if you're, it, I don't know, you know, if you're sharing an account with a counselor, so if, if someone has a counselor account, um, you can share the notes with your counselor or, or your parent, by the way, or you can um, make it private because there are a lot of things that, um, you know, people just want to, if kids see something, they're, they're going to maybe make note of it and they don't necessarily want to, want to share it. So yeah. I just really love the discussions that naturally happen during Absolutely. and after a card sort. 
because I think for parents, I don't know, Evelyn, if you ever do it with the parents there, but I think they sometimes end up hoping, uh, sharing their experiences in college. So, we'll, so our rule is parents are allowed to look, but not touch. <laughs> and that, that was especially true. I'm going to stop the share. Um, that was especially true when we actually physically used the cards because the parents wanted to sit right there and say, oh, honey, of course you want a small school. Oh, of course you want access to professors. And we say, nope, these are not your preferences. These are his preferences. Yeah, no, so, I can, yeah, you can tell when they're looking at their parents every time they click on a card. It's, yeah, yes, yeah, right. So what we do, especially now that we're virtual, is we have the students share their screen with us so that we can watch them go through Excellent. this process and we can see how sure. long they hover on each card before they right. make their choice. So oh, it really awesome. helps. It really helps us as counselors, and obviously we have a pretty pretty vast knowledge of colleges sure. that are out there. But Chuck, now I'd like to bring you in and um, give us a little bit of background. And how is it that you, who work for the University of Delaware, know everything that you know about helping students build a college list? No, absolutely, Evelyn. Thanks for having me. I've been working in college admissions for seven years now, and I've worked for two different institutions, uh, Virginia Commonwealth University, which is my alma mater, and now University of Delaware for uh, almost six years. I'm also a member of the Regional Admissions Counselors of California, which is the largest regional uh, admissions counselor group in the nation. Uh, I work for the University of Delaware, but I'm actually uh, based and live in Long Beach, California. So not only do I have uh, access, uh, uh, colleagues, so to speak, of uh, over 100 and about 120 colleges and universities from around the world that have regional missions counselors in California that I've been networking and been learning about their schools uh, for going on six to seven years now, but also living out here in California, you have to be very familiar with the California state system, the UC, and also the private schools too. So I've interacted with a lot of the college admissions counselors and the admissions staff, but also when you're at college fairs too, you're here to help students and families out. So while the University of Delaware is a great university, it certainly isn't for everyone. So I'm certainly there to be a counselor first and to help guide students uh, through this very um, sometimes stressful process. So um, I've always been kind of a, a student of, of colleges and, and always have picked up things along the way uh, about different universities as I've been in my job at the University of Delaware. So what's your, what's your advice? Um, well, one of the things that I think people do wrong as they start to approach this process is um, they look at rankings. Um, they, you know, they say, oh, I want to be a psychology major. Let me look up the top 25 psychology colleges in the country. Or, you know, let me look up just the, just the top ranked colleges in the country and, and try for those. So if you accept that that's the wrong way to go, what is the right way to go as you're trying to build what we would consider a balanced list? The one thing I love about the Coursera system, and I actually do have a counselor account because I have um, friends that have uh, sons or daughters that are going through the process of, hey, you work in college admissions. Hey, would you mind talking to me uh, and talking to my son or daughter? So I actually found this to be very useful uh, in that it's a great starting point to um, really think about things that you haven't really thought about because you're right, Evelyn, a lot of people will start with maybe a major or perhaps they're familiar with the college because either their parent or a family member been there or it's in their state and, or their folks on location. But a lot of students, and rightfully so, because they're being exposed to a whole new world of academia and social life, sometimes they do change their mind when they actually are at their college. So if you're going to be uh, uh, focusing on psychology, you might find that maybe sociology is the route you want to go after you've taken a few semesters at your college. So uh, I feel that uh, if you start with Corsava and develop and hopefully a, 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 a preference list that isn't heavily weighted on must-haves, because the one thing I always start when I advise families and students that there's no such thing as a perfect college. There's no, there's probably yeah. no college that has every single must have, and especially if you have 15 to 20 must haves. Like I try yeah. to get students as they're eventually going through the process prior to applying and developing that final list that uh, what are the three or four core values that you will never negotiate with? Oh, and, you know, 
Yeah, that's a good way to access the professors. Kids. Yeah, uh, yep. you want to have a, you want outdoors, you want to have that social environment. And you, so usually those three to four, I hope they'd be spread out between maybe academic support services. I would imagine you're going to choose colleges that have your major. So definitely maybe a, a, a style of learning, like design your own major. It's a big one. Uh, so I do feel that this isn't a system or the when you're building your colleges where you're going to look at these categories and start say the beginning of your junior year and you'll your mind's going to change from when you start doing this as you progress through high school so I encourage you maybe even like two or three times a year heading into junior year take a look about those at those categories that you've developed and as you've taken classes in high school maybe in dual enrollment courses honors classes uh take a look about what you've said with your must-haves or would be nice and you know like it's so easy of course I'll adjust what your preferences are and definitely make notes. I, I certainly have a, um, I think one of the good things about building a successful college list is building an organized college list as well. <laughs> so um, it can be very daunting as you're going through this process because I'm sure Evelyn, you and all your counselors, you're starting the student, the families with a larger amount of colleges and to have them research and then bring it down to a manageable list. Right, which like I would this say, is the problem. <laughs> like where, you know, I walk into houses when I was still walking into houses, um, uh -huh. <laughs> and you know, and I and the mom would sort of drop this in the middle of the table, and it had like you know, forty-two little sticky notes sticking out this side, and then another twenty-seven sticking out this side. Like, what do you do if this is your starting point? Um, I mean, I would argue that this, you guys have heard me talk about this, mm -hmm. this could also be your starting point, um, depending on what style of college you're looking for. But what do you do if you're, I mean, when we work with students, we, our lists start like 50 or 60, like let's, let's make it bigger before we make it smaller is what we say. You certainly, uh, there's so many tools out there that sometimes it can be, uh, pretty daunting. Um, so beyond looking at, you know, I imagine some of those books they'll have, um, usually there's three other categories I have students really and families look at, you know, is it an academic fit for you? Is it a social fit for you? And then probably almost equally important, is it going to be a financial fit for you? Absolutely. Because I, yeah, I, I, I can't think of anything worse than going through this very stressful process. So there's a lot of highs, there's, there's a lot of tension, some nervousness. You're going to make a great college mm -hmm. list. And if you make a great college list, there's going to be some schools that won't accept you. You are going to be denied from some of your colleges, but there's going to be a lot of colleges that are going to be wanting you to come onto their campus. And ultimately you'll have that decision. And if you don't have that financial fit as part of the conversation from the beginning, I can't think of anything worse than to yes. have someone go through this whole process and say, you know what, it's just financially not going to work out. I think you got to have that honest discussion with your family uh, yep. right from the beginning when you start this. Um, yep. I do feel that having, you know, um, a list of maybe nine to 12 max schools is what I generally recommend it. Three of them should be more what I'd classify reach schools, meaning, you know, there are schools out there and a lot of the, the highly ranked schools that are out there, a lot of them are reaches for everyone. They're those highly selective schools where maybe they only admit 20% uh, or less of their students. I think that you're going to want to have two to three of those schools on that list that are considered reaches based on academic data, meaning your GPA. Uh, you have to find out uh, most, if not all colleges have it very easily accessible on their website. You see the last year's admitted class academic profile. Yep. So if you look at the academic profile and find out what that mean GPA is and compare it to your GPA, you want to make sure that uh, for, you know, those reach schools, most likely either your GPA is either slightly below that mean 50%, meaning that, you know, whatever they display, if there's uh, if their mean GPA is a 3.7 uh, weighted GPA or unweighted GPA, that means that there uh, is 50% of uh, the admitted students last year that had a 3.7 GPA, but there are 25% that had higher and 25% had lower. Um, but also, this is something that's fluidly changing is with test scores because of the COVID-19 situation that we're, the whole world's in. There's been a lot of schools that have um, either gone test optional for 
this next year and the next couple of years or have uh, completely changed their policies. Yep. So I think it's very important to kind of go to their websites and talk to the admissions counselors for your region to find out what that policy is. Uh, thanks for understanding. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sometimes, she's, uh, she, yeah, sometimes she accidentally calls me. It's kind of hilarious. Um, <laughs> I look down at my phone and I see missed call from Chuck. Um, so, but I think one of the nuggets of what you just said, there was a bunch of stuff in there and financial fit. Honestly, it's a whole separate conversation. It's hugely important. Sure. Um, and you have to be honest about what you, not just what you can afford, but what you want to afford because you don't, I've said this so many times, you don't want to have this conversation with your child um we see that you got in but we don't want to pay that seven right. thousand dollars a year it's a horrible conversation to have with your child well and i um, think that's the beauty of having uh the financial aid card in the sort and also yeah. merit aid scholarship card yep. because a lot of kids will drop it into the don't care pile and the parents <laughs> Have and a to say no. At that point, that it's it's and it's much better to have that discussion early on at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. But Chuck, that nugget that I again, I think I think the more we say it, the more people will believe it. Because I think sometimes we say things, but people think, yeah, but that's true for everyone else. But my kid, but my kid, but my kid with the fifteen fifty and the four point oh and the ten AP classes is going to get in everywhere, right? And the reality is. There are some schools that are reach for everyone. We totally use that phrase, reach mm -hmm. for everyone. Yeah, I mean, we're looking at an 11% admit rate. It's not that 89% of the students who applied were, were, you know, were not qualified. Everyone who applies to some of these super selective schools is qualified to go to that school and succeed at that school. But the, the admissions office has to make very, very difficult choices. And so one thing I like about Corsava about going through and really meticulously finding out what those must have or would be nice and really also finding out what you, know, you don't want is when you're doing that research, and again, hopefully keeping very good notes. And I'm glad that Corsava has evolved. You know, I actually had have my old set of cards and now having the cloud and being able to take notes, it, it's really great in that, you know, when it comes down to, you know, writing uh, not only a personal statement, but many colleges require that why us, why are you using us and a variety of other supplements, this note -making would certainly be a great resource for uh, putting those great nuggets in and because that, that's where I really feel that uh, students may miss the ball in that mm -hmm. you know it's getting to be the end of you know that first fall semester their finals classes are the, probably the stressful they've ever had and then they have these deadlines the holidays and then so maybe those why us essays get to be very similar from college to college right. so doing the the hard work ahead of time and then kind of finding out specific details. And there's many different things you can do exploring beyond the web pages, going to look at curriculums for a couple of different majors you like and seeing uh, um, what classes really stand out that might be unique for a certain major, what, what excites you, uh, I really think it's something, what is a certain club organization, uh, or perhaps is this something that uh, um, you've been able to talk to someone that's been to that school, you went to visit or toured and you asked if someone that, it was in the quad what they love maybe even what they don't like about the school i think that's all important sure. to get both perspectives but that should all be factored into specific details where if you're writing a why us essay for a supplemental essay you shouldn't be able to replace a college name for that essay and have it work right. um so for instance with delaware sometimes when i we used to have that optional supplement we would get i'm looking for a um, a tier one research school in the mid-Atlantic that's close to major cities. Well, there's so many colleges out there that could fit that. So uh, I think that, uh, you know, it is something that you do have to do a lot of work beforehand, but you're, right. it's going to pay off in the long run, I think. But, you know, and I, I don't know if you guys have found this, but I, I've had a, uh, students come back and tell me, you know, having looked at those core values and the things that were important to me, I really carried that to college and I realized that, you know, I, I knew how to engage right away. Just, you know, graduation rates are so low. I just think anything we can do to really help kids connect with a place at a really deep level yep. and be successful. If they know that these five things are things I'm going to seek out right away and I know where they are, I, I want to join this club. I think it can really make a, you know, a big difference. You know, one of our, one of our, 
people watching just asked if the cards can help narrow down a list. And I responded, but I'd like to hear, I mean, what I, what I typed in the answer, and I really believe this, is um, if you really refine what your priorities are. We always tell students, the college search is like a Venn diagram, right? Mm -hmm. You have to decide what the circles are, right? And, and right. then we overlap them, and then we see what shines through the middle. But there's some, I mean, one of the things that really comes to mind is access to professors is one mm -hmm. of those cards. That's some one kids, of our top, top 10 must-haves. Right, yeah. but the funny thing is there's some kids who, stu students who really, really want access to professors. They thrive in that you know, mm -hmm. collaborative environment. There are some kids who literally want to sit in the back of a lecture hall. They take great notes. They do very well on exams. They're perfect with that. Right. Um, there well, are. I think, yeah, that's why you have the one of a crowd card and right. the big fish in a little pond big card. Fish in a little pond, right? Yeah. So, I mean, or do you pond. like to do you like to be at the top of your class? I think this is the one that that comes up the most often to really get kids to stop and think: yeah. is do you do better? when you're uh, pushed by your peers, um, or do you do, which might be a more target type school, or do you do better, um, uh, you know, when you're at the top of the class? I mean, yep. it, it's, it's, um, it, it really gets them thinking about those things. And I do think that helps you narrow your choices because, and, and one of the things we're gonna do today is, um, you know, the, the, we have list recommendations in the counselor account. So I thought it might be fun today to, um, if anybody is gonna actually purchase a, a cloud account or the hard copy cards which come with a cloud account, this isn't the free student and parent account, um, but we're gonna give uh, those parents access to the beta list generator and, oh, wow. and the research side of it, because I think that, you know, we're curious what people think of the recommendations and um, you know the more we can build better ratings uh, the better the list will get it's really kind of a crowdsource right i yeah. mean that's kind of the yeah. philosophy behind it right so for example before you actually launched um corsava in its existing form you asked a whole bunch of us to go in and right and give um like give you information on the colleges that we visited right Right, we have hundreds of counselors who've been approved for the cafe and they have been rating things as they go. Um, we're continually building that. We've also got other resources, the baseline data that we built into that, um, that's uh, more iPads type data so that those recommendations come through. So you just, yep. um, the only thing you'd need to do is if anybody does wanna get access to it, who's a parent and not a counselor is just um, after you, purchase it, just um, send an email to hello at corsava.com and just mention you were here today. Awesome. All right. So so the difference is the free version, you just go to corsava.com. The and free version, any student. And that was a really important thing to me when I launched it because I just felt that there were so many kids that would benefit from just doing the card sort and, and having those other tools um, to, to manage it. And as I said, the resource the resources we added today will help kids do it on their own. Yep. So they can invite their parents and those are free accounts. Um, right. And the cloud account, which is a counselor account is, is what Chuck was talking about that, you know, you actually um, invite your student to the account and then you can see some recommended colleges as well. That's what, that's what we yeah. have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Chuck, let's go back to the, the list, um, the composition of the list. So, Again, I'm struggling. I'm a parent with a kid with awesome test scores and great grades and tons of APs and great extracurriculars. And you're telling me my list should have how many schools on it and how many of them can be reached? You know, I, I feel that it's um, very wise to have a balanced list between reach schools, which we've already discussed, likely schools, which means that your son or daughter has is within that middle 50% for GPA test scores. And again, all this are, should be schools that have a lot of those must have or would be nice things, you know, things that are exciting him or her about that school, uh, hopefully a financial fit too. And then three uh, uh, likely schools and likely schools tend to be where your academic performance exceeds that mean 50 percent yeah. gpa and test score and a lot of times you'll start to see a perhaps more uh, financial scholarship merit opportunities right. with these schools but again every school that you hit 
apply to should be a school that you would be excited to go. And, you know, ultimately there's just going to be one place, but I, I do feel that uh, um, nine to 12 schools uh, uh, tends to be, I think, a great magic number. And I think, you know, part of it has to be with uh, stress factors too. You know, a lot of the schools are featured, and I don't want to get too far into the weeds here, but they're, it, they are on the common application, which essentially is a central application system that a student only needs to input their demographic information one time. They only need their counselors to upload their transcripts once, the letters of recommendation once. And then they select the schools and they can apply very easily to these schools. But some schools do have those supplemental essays. And so if you exceed 12 schools and say 15 to 20, you know, even if half of them have on average one to two supplemental essays, we're talking in addition to the personal statement, close to 20 other short answer essays in the midst of everything that's going on. So, and ultimately too, I think that it's very, you know, I think that if a student has more than 12 schools, I don't think that they're really diving into themselves and finding out what is important in all those six categories that the course of a, is asking students to sort. Um, well, you know, and I do think when it comes down to majors and different stuff, there are certainly schools out there for specific majors. You know, I'll right. give you one example of Delaware. We have, we're one of four programs in the U.S. as art conservation as an undergraduate and graduate right. program. So if you really want art conservation, your list of schools is probably not going to be that high. But psychology, business, there are so many options, not only in the U.S., but also around the world, too. So I do think that the course of cards are a great start, but I do think that that... Um, through research or even just visiting schools or schools that are very similar to geographic areas elsewhere. So I live in California. If I want to experience a, uh, the environment of a college town uh, in California, there are options here, but maybe I want to go to the East Coast. You might go and visit locally, uh, uh, say a UC Davis that might have a real college town feel. Yep. not wanting to go to Davis, but to see if maybe you actually like that style of the community around Davis, if that really is something that excited you. And that way you might have something to relate while you're looking at schools elsewhere on the country. And that also could possibly save you some money too from traveling and visiting schools because it can get expensive. Well, and I find one of the things that I, uh, just to simplify it, you know, if kids know and love a couple of schools in their really um, likely category that we know for sure they're gonna get into, then don't complicate your life by adding a lot of schools that are tougher to get into that you wouldn't go to instead. Right. And that can yeah. really help cut down the number sort of in that middle category. Yeah. I, I, there are a few kids will just say, I'll go to a stretch school, but I love this. You know, I hear this all the time. You know, I, I'd be really happy at the University of Washington. So I don't want to add a lot of more expensive schools into that middle category, but I might go to this school that has great financial aid in my stretch category. Well, and this is where the discussion on finances comes in. Yeah. And this is, to be honest, this is where the parents, and, and I will ask the Hutchinsons this in a couple of weeks, this is where the parents, can, you know, can really, really have to think about do I believe, this is really what it comes down to, do I believe that my child will get a better education and have a better life, you uh -huh. know, better things happen to them if the name of the college is better? Right. That's a decision that you have to make on your own. If you ask someone like me or someone like any of us or someone who does what we do, that question, if you say, is X a better school than Y, mm -hmm. we're going to say to you, that's not the right question. The question is, is it better for Johnny? Mm -hmm. Right. So is it right. better for your child? Because, mm -hmm. you know, perfect example, both my parents went to UCLA. I would have died at UCLA. It would have been awful for me. I would have drowned. So I didn't even apply, you know, but half my high school class applied to UCLA. A quarter of my high school class went to a state school, um, uh, went to CSUN right here in the Valley. Um, and, and same thing, I would have drowned. I would never have spoken to a professor. I would never have had the relationships that I have created in, in the environment that I had 
But I'll tell you something, my high school classmates who went to the local state school, they're doing just fine. Their lives have not been inalterably damaged because they went to a state school, right? So they made the best of that experience that they had. And that's a huge part of mm -hmm. not just the selection process, but you have to tell your kids once you're done, like this is the end is not when you get in to college, right? The end is when you go and you make your friends and you do your classes and you meet your professors and you do your internships so you know I think people have this belief that you know a better PS highly ranked higher ranked school is a, is a better experience totally not true for right. everyone but that's why this process of selecting a list is so personal so two different kids who grew up in the same house who possibly were in the womb together um, could have an entirely different list because what's right for this one is not right for this one. And right. we see that all the time. That's a really good point. Absolutely. But twins are fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's see, I'm monitoring the questions. So the question was, can you start your common application now? And the answer that I wrote in the chat is there are sections of the common app that you can fill out now. Mm -hmm. And by the way, when I say you, I mean students, parents, right. please do not go make yourself a common app account. <laughs> um, but I know you have and I know you will and you do. Um, so you can, um, you can register for a common application account. You can fill out the profile section. Um, which is basically like, you know, student name, address, the, the family history, family educational history. Um, you can fill out the educational history. So many colleges want self-reported grades and there's a place in the Common App to fill that out. You can put colleges onto your list. However, um, every year on August 1st, the Common App basically like churns and it spits a whole bunch of information away. So you don't want to start um, putting information in there. Like I wouldn't put any activities in there right now. Um, mm -hmm. We have our clients, we literally just did this today. We have our students build their activities list in a Google Doc. That's put it, smart, yeah. Put it somewhere outside the Common App because every now and then, um, like we know the Common App gives a big burp on August 1st, but honestly, every now and then the Common App burps for no apparent reason with no thing. <laughs> So what we tell people, sometimes I don't use that word, what we tell people is don't write anything original into directly into the boxes on the Common App. Do everything in a Google Doc and then drop the, you know, cut and paste the, the text in. You can start working on essays. The essays will be the same. And there is a COVID essay, COVID related essay. Um, I'll put it in the links when we post this or when this video goes, goes up. Um, it's, it's a very short question. It's basically how, how have you been impacted by COVID? It is optional. Um, it's only 250 words, which is literally like a paragraph, a, a skimpy paragraph. Um, but what isn't updated in the Common App and what won't be updated basically until August 1st is like Chuck and Anne have been talking about all of these supplemental essays. And I just want to um, sort of drive home that point and um, you know, Chuck said, again, if you have 10 or 12 schools on your list and each one of them has um, an essay, even right. if it's just 250 words, that's a lot of work. Yeah. And I will tell you that the reachier schools are the ones that have more essays, like Stanford mm -hmm. has nine, you know, um, you know, uh, I'm trying to think Yale has at least four or five. They're tiny, but you cannot cut and paste from someone else's essay. It, it just won't work. And frankly, Chuck, you're the one who, who sits and reads these essays, right? How many times have you seen University of Maryland instead of University of Delaware? I've seen that Penn State Rutgers. We actually got rid of our supplemental essays last year. Okay. Uh, and uh, we, you know, in the many ways I, you know, where, where I mentioned that, yeah, that does sometimes happen. It, it was something that I really did look forward to reading just because you could really dive into why particularly the University of Delaware would be a, a good social academic mm -hmm. fit um, yeah. for that. But yeah, it has to be intimate. You have to, mm -hmm. you know, you have to be able to succinctly pull some of these. So a couple of things that I've just been thinking of while we're chatting here is, you know, every single uh, college has an admissions counselor who fields either emails, yeah. phone calls, or sometimes has a college rep that might travel or maybe even live near you. So I think that it's important whether or not a, a school uh, keeps track of perhaps if you visited any demonstrated interest or you know anything. I think it's important to make a to reach out if you're a student 
And if it's going to be a possible school that you either A, want to learn more about, uh, or B, want to know some of the changes regarding uh, COVID-19 that's going forward, mm-hmm. or, or C, you know, just want to answer the questions or perhaps be connected to a student, I, I highly suggest you to reach out and utilize the university admissions office. Um, and if you can't find their uh, uh, contact information, give them a phone call and, and just give them some information uh, or send an email to their general email account and they'll connect you to the admissions counselor. A lot of times they'll connect you to the admissions counselor that might be in charge of reading your application. So certainly they're, they, we're here to help you. We're not here to deny students. We're here to hopefully admit you, uh, but we're really here to counsel you. Um, well, especially- another thing I've, not going to uh, the fact that they're not touring and not going to high schools or college fairs it means a lot to have a student reach out no yeah absolutely it, and, and we've talked about demonstrated interest and we'll talk about it more but it's 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 funny you know most students and parents think um that the people who receive and review college applications it's like this black hole right they don't realize that you're human beings and yeah. and you you remember names and you check your email and you know you have people on your speed dial so um <laughs> they they always sort of think it's interesting when we we talk to college admissions people all the time that's that's our job is to talk with you and you know get information and give information but but you can do that too not as a parent we, they don't want to talk to parents it should be the student. It needs to be the student. Unless we're talking about financial aid, then it can be the parent. But, but when we're talking about where a student is gonna to go to college, it really needs to be the student picking up the phone and expressing that interest and asking questions. And in order to do that in an educated way, what should you do? You should research the college's website first. You should learn something. You should figure out what you like about it, what you connect to. You should think about what questions you have. And when you are at that stage, that's when you pick up the phone or you send an email um, and you ask. And people like Chuck are totally happy to answer questions and and help you find, you know, if their school is the right fit for you. Even with financial aid, you're right. I think that's certainly appropriate time for parents to be on the call. But I would be on the call with your student because we're Mm -hmm. not allowed to give out merit or need-based award information over the phone if just to a parent. We have to give it out to the student. So it is something that the parent, if they should be really driving this whole process and I always equate the parent or guardian as a navigator. Mm -hmm. You need to be there to support uh, your student there. You can certainly be there to guide. But um, another thing that I think could be helpful, two more quick points. as you're going through and making your must have would be nice or no way, don't want any part of it. You know, <laughs> keep in mind that if you're focused on small, maybe liberal arts colleges, you want that strong interaction with professors. Don't initially discount some of the state schools or tier one research yeah. schools. There's a, um, a lot of us have honors programs or right. honor colleges yeah. that it's kind of like a, a community within the college that, uh, has some unique benefits for so you know take for instance Delaware we have about 43 to 4400 first year students that come in each year but we have about 600 honors call honors program students that are within that first year class and so they have unique benefits a lot of times they have more um uh, enriched academic opportunities they yeah. live together all around the students so you know another great one is Barrett Barnes College of Arizona State they have a huge population but yeah. just keep in mind that don't discount right. state schools because a lot of them may have other opportunities and the other thing that I, I wanted to point out too is when you're looking at that that academic profile you know I, you heard me mention earlier that uh, sometimes ma- a lot of schools have a variety of different majors. Well, sometimes certain schools, if let's say you're interested in, in health science, maybe specifically nursing and maybe psychology. You know, I'm just going to use Delaware as an example. Like nursing is our most competitive major. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is certainly that uh, 164 students uh, that we take each year is out of a pool about 3,000. It's highly selective, and that uh, admission profile for a nursing student is far higher academically for a GPA test score than our business college. It is doesn't mean our business at Delaware isn't great. It's, it's just uh, we're not as selective. Just We have a certain amount of spots for nursing, so just keep that in mind. I do highly encourage students to have multiple interests, but keep in mind, too, that if you're looking just at the academic profile, 
and not diving in a little bit more and reaching out to college admissions counselors about some of your interests and how that might be looked at differently in the academic or the evaluation process with the application. Uh, I think that students should be looking at that and it's something they might miss out on. Um, and and that might differ by in-state and out-of-state too. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, I'll tell you what, we have, um, we have just a, a couple questions that I'm responding to, but I've, uh, you guys have been very generous with your time and our audience has been very generous too. Um, we will post uh, this video uh, just as we've posted the other four on the Magellan College Counseling website. It's right under the resources tab. It's the first, there's a first link right there called live stream uh, interview series. Um, but I hope everyone will come back. Next week, we're going to talk about extracurriculars and sort of the non-academic side of the college application, which Great. frankly, with with uh, yeah. so many schools going test optional, it, it has yeah. only escalated in oh, importance, gosh. right? That so yeah, so that's next week. And I hope everyone will join us again. And Chuck Lydia from the University of Delaware, thank you so much for joining me. And Ann Wager from Corsava, my absolute go-to number one resource. Thank you for everything thank you do. Thank you, Evelyn. Um, and thank you for sharing all of your knowledge with us. And thanks everyone for being here. We'll see you next week.